I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 21st of October 2022. It's Friday and welcome to my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. Uh, I am in the south side of El Centro heading into La Borrio as I'm out for a walk. Uh, I am, you can kind of tell if you follow the videos, filming this immediately after I did the show yesterday because I have not had a lot of time this week to get caught up. I've been doing a lot of editing and a lot of catch up at work. Filming the show has been a little bit tough whether because of the weather or because we've had a lot of stuff going on one way or another it has been a busy week so i'm doing my best to at least get my intros and things done that i can so that i am ready to get these together for you guys because i don't want to fall behind but things are going well i'm coming past the children's park here this is the literally children's park park at infantile it is closed much of the time so you often don't get to see it but it is a pretty cute park right here in the middle of the city And uh, some cute designs, neat murals. I wish we could get in and take pictures of the murals, but it's not a park you go into. And right in front of me, I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. Well, I'm going to try to show as we go by. There's all this new sidewalk work going on. But this is, I mentioned on yesterday's video that there's a cool building that's being taken over by the um, Society of uh, uh, Gurdian, which is the um, museum here. And we just came past the museum. It's just behind me. It's not too far away. This is the new building that they're working on here. Take a look in there. That is all glass on the inside. So it's an old colonial structure, but there's all this new glass going on, which is a great way to modernize these old buildings. And this is the tax office here. DGI is the federal tax center for uh, corporations, right? Not, not for people, as far as I know. Uh, so this whole building that I'm going past is this beautiful giant old colonial structure and they're doing this modernization in such a great way this is what i love is when you have the old bones of the building um but you also have this i'm assuming they're going to air condition that and make it like an art gallery because that's what the, the uh foundation primarily does they have a collection of colonial homes throughout downtown Leon, and they purchase one at a time or get them donated is actually what typically happens and they then convert them into art museums and history and architectural museums so the building itself becomes part of the exhibit so it's a little bit just the tiniest bit like the Genesee Country Museum that we have back home where I'm from uh, and where their main exhibit is the buildings themselves. Now what they do there is they take buildings from around the area and move them to this giant lot that they have uh, and have a museum of buildings, which is absolutely fantastic. And if you're in Western New York, I highly recommend it. It's one of the best museums I've ever encountered in the world. Just happens to be close to where I grew up. Uh, and it's one of the few that every time I mention museums, my kids say, I don't know how much I like museums, but we love that one, right? So seriously, uh, and it's the one that made me love museums as a kid as well. And it has an art museum in it. It has other things. It has lots of activities. One of the things about the space that they have is it makes it really easy to have lots of activities. And if we end up back in New York at some point where the weather's good, I'm definitely going to do, go do a show around that museum. I have filmed there previously back in 2019, but it was before I really knew anything about filming. It was before we had the vlog and it was just, and, and Mary came with us. It was Mary and Dominica and I, we took the kids and we went for the chocolate festival and had an amazing time at the museum. And I'd really like to go and do it again but I don't know when time is going to allow because we have to have weather and time in order to do it. And that is tough. Real quick, I want to show this. This house on the corner, this is one I talk about sometimes. This house looks like the most decrepit thing ever. This is in La Barrio on 4th Ave, which is the main road in La Barrio. So we have this beautiful orange building and then this completely devastated, ugly thing here. But you will notice there is a historic building marker on it. There are some nice windows around the corner. And I have, at moments, gotten just a peek inside, and that is a mansion. It is incredibly large, and it is beautiful inside. They just leave the outside looking like that. I don't know why. To throw people off, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but it is, it is really interesting. It is busy. Like, I'm kind of in a rush hour, so getting across the street here, a little bit challenging. Not bad. Uh, but so this this what they're doing here is they take buildings that are more or less contiguous with each other not quite and they create a museum that allows you to walk from building to building in the downtown area and experience these really classic downtown very high-end Leon homes of the past that have now been preserved but open to the public and uh, modernized with the ability to have a 
really high-end museum on the inside. It is considered one of the best museums in Central America. It is really fantastic. Highly recommended. Hola! Hi. Como esta? Uh, so, if you're going to be in Leon, take time to check out the Ortiz Gurdian Museum collection. Well, well. All right, the GoPro died on me again. It overheated and freaked out and just cut me off. So we're definitely getting down to the wire. We're on the last legs of the GoPro Hero 9. Still two months, that's all we gotta make it. We're gonna have the 11. And honestly, I'm thinking about getting, this is my first little mention of it. I'm thinking about getting the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, which is supposed to be, supposed to be, whatever that means, uh, announced in November. Uh, the Pocket original looked really cool. The Pocket 2 was a nice upgrade. They so far have come out every two years and there's some pretty good sources say, man, it's loud out here. Sources say that they're bringing out the Pocket 3 in November of 2022, which matches the every two years pattern. So it's pretty likely DJI is really large and it has a pretty good engineering department that's able to do that stuff now. So especially for those who don't know, they own Hasselblad. So they really know cameras. They do a lot of big stuff. And uh, the Pocket series is so perfect for what I do for vlogging and like it's so much smaller than what I hold. Um, there's a good chance it would work really, really well for me. And I think you guys would like some of the improvements especially the like focus stuff because like the GoPro I'm never in focus I don't know if you guys noticed and I probably shouldn't have mentioned it because now you'll you'll always be like wait he's out of focus but I am the background's in focus which is great for when I'm doing certain things and it's it doesn't there's no focus jumping right because it's fixed focus it's a small aperture and uh, I'm really close though but when I as I get closer I just get blurrier and blurrier it's not terrible, but it's not perfect. And if I had something that did focusing, yeah, it might jump around, but it should detect my face and I'll be in focus. And those will be just a little bit softer back there, which isn't really bad. We don't want like blown out blurry background. That would be annoying because you want to see where I am and what I'm doing. There's a balance, but having me be out of focus and just having only one focus is kind of limiting. A lot of kids playing out there. Uh, so. So yeah, so I really recommend going to the uh, Gurdian Muse Museum, Museo, I'm, my Spanish and English are just merging at this point, uh, here in Leon, it's a great museum. Otherwise, I'm gonna go film the rest of the day out on the beach, fill you guys in on that, and I, current Scott from right now, will jump back to do the recap at the end of the day. But before we go and do the rest of the update, please remember to like and subscribe, share this on social media, tell your friends about it. If you know someone who's interested in Nicaragua, travel, vlogging, that kind of stuff, go let them know. Uh, check out my other channels. I've got Drive Warp where I do long formats from the car. I've got Camera Cafe where I talk about cameras and stuff, much like I just did, but much longer. Uh, and of course, Central American Living is getting going. And there's just a few short videos, they're only one minute long, but go check those out. Uh, I've got different things. They're all linked down below on my main page on YouTube. Just go show some love on those channels. That would be very much appreciated. And like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Any questions, things about Nicaragua, things about vlogging, things about cameras, whatever. Do that. If you'd like to su support the channel directly, you can buy me a coffee. Thank you so much. And off to the beach. After a long day of work and everything at the office and working on videos and all that stuff, uh, tonight Alan and Anna wanted to go out and hang out, as we often do on Friday nights, and Marcella was out on the beach all day. So in the evening, she came out to Leon, and all of us and Paul went out to uh, 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 Desi Naso for dinner or breakfast for dinner because it is a breakfast place. It's a diner uh, and, and really does, I've mentioned it before, has very American diner kind of food mixed with Nicaraguan and it's in no way would confuse you with an American, being an American diner. But it does have a lot of things that kind of give you that vibe. They have breakfast all day. It's called Desionaso, which kind of gives you a diner feeling. Their menu is relatively large. If you get their fried shrimp, it actually feels like an American fish ba uh, shrimp basket. Um, there's a bunch of things now, of course, loads of Nicaraguan food, so it doesn't actually feel like a diner, but it does have a little bit of a diner vibe and it fits that place in the ecosystem. It's not 24 seven or anything like that, but they do serve breakfast until pretty late and it's quite a Affordable. Like a diner, it's kind of a home cooking sort of place, but with restaurant food, things that would be difficult to make at home in most cases. So we did that. That was nice. It's a, it's a, we were consistently like Desionaso and it's affordable. So it's the kind of place that when you just don't know where you want to go, it's a great choice. So we did that and then uh, went out to 23 Bar to go dancing uh, at the club. That is our favorite club here in Leon. Pretty much everyone's favorite club here in Leon. 
and uh, what is tire this? Uh, and we got there on the early side, so it's probably like, probably actually before 8.30. Uh, and generally you don't get any amount of people dancing until about 10.30, possibly 11. A little bit later on Friday nights. On Saturday nights, people go out a little bit earlier. Friday nights, it's a little bit hard to get people out. Uh, so it's a little bit lighter, but it's still, uh, but we were early enough, we didn't have to pay cover. Important note, because some it is like a $2 cover almost. Not, I guess it's like a $1.50 cover. Uh, so we got there, um, got some snacks, did some drinks, mostly just hung out for a couple hours. But just before we left, there was some dancing. So we did dance, but not a ton, uh, just because we were on the early side and no one wanted to stay out late. It was just kind of like, we kind of feel like going dancing. That's one of my complaints. I mean, not a complaint. It's just one of the things that isn't perfect um, about Nicaragua is if you want to go out dancing, which like if I was in the States, I couldn't go out dancing, right? There's nowhere to go. Um, and, and certainly not the kind of dancing we like, like they have here, not the music that we like. like Nicaragua has this whole ecosystem of dancing that's fantastic. My complaint is that sometimes we're old and, and American, and we like to kind of call it an evening early. This is Chepe going by, woo! <laughs> and uh, Chepe's like, I don't want to be on the show. Um, and we're, we're old and we're American, and sometimes we like to have our evenings be a lot earlier than uh, Nicaraguans do. So we go to the... Um, and we go to the clubs and it's like, we want to go home before people are showing up to dance. That's not ideal for us, but that's just, it's a cultural thing that can't be helped. This is interesting. I know that they're doing a bunch of maintenance. I have not seen it. Puesto del Sol is updating. Uh, they haven't done an update in a while. They did put in this new hotel over on the left. So they've got a lot going on and they did need like new furniture and some new decorations would be perfect so they're putting in i see new construction in the back they do such an excellent job here such nice people uh if you're in the area you got to eat there obviously eat at the simple but also eat at puesto del sol uh fantastic people and fantastic food really good service definitely the most famous and popular standalone restaurant in town uh, and people do come from quite some ways to get uh italian there Really nice venue. It'll be exciting to see what they do to the place when they update it, probably to match the hotel next door, which is very fancy. Uh, so yeah, so that was our evening. We, we were, you know, definitely going home on the early side. It always feels weird, but got in at a decent time, uh, hung out with the kids a little bit, and uh, actually got to bed at a pretty decent hour. It was not too bad. Ooh, we can hear the thunder rolling in. This was, as I started this video, these skies were clear. Uh, it's out here on the beach. I'm in Las Bonitas recording this at the moment just because I can, and it's nice to get out here. And by the way, we're just gonna swing around Playa Roca. This is months ago, right? It's not new, no, but I haven't been able to show it. This is all new. This is all dirt and just awful uh, six months before. And uh, now they've put in uh, a new driveway parking area and it's quite nice. And here we are. And they also put in this new wall. If you look at my old videos, they had this, this was a really low wall in terrible disrepair. It would be nice if they painted it a little bit more. That is actually a gate, which is why it looks that way. And uh, here we are at the Simple. There's some damage from the storm, so lots of maintenance going on. And in tomorrow's video, I'll show more, but this uh, along the top of this wall is all being rebuilt this weekend. Oh, I'm getting drops of rain already. That came so fast. And uh, I'm gonna hop in and just do a walkthrough of the bar and grill here on the beach, because we have not shown it in a while. Hey, como esta? <laughs> and look how dark it is getting. It was so bright when I set out to do the recordings. It just, it's amazing how fast it comes down here. Uh, you guys miss seeing the beach? And it's nice being out here for a change. And uh, I need to get out here and record more often. All right, that's it from here. Remember to like and subscribe, leave your comments below. You can buy me. Oh, we're going to have to do that later. And past Scott is back again. And we're going to talk about our throwback to October 21st, 2019. What's cool about this day is that it is 11 ye days, 11 days, three years ago. It was 11 days until we were heading to Nicaragua with Alan and Rachel to go to San Juan del Sur and Granada. So we're starting to really be looking forward to the trip. 11 days in the future, three years ago. Wow, I'm losing my mind. Tonight with the kids was a night of playing Nancy Drew video games. We played Message in the Haunted Mansion. Uh, and uh, the girls are really, they really struggle with the really old games for, for really good reasons. So we moved on after playing that one, which I liked a bit, 
uh, and we're really glad we finally finished it. That one took forever to finish. Finally moved on to the Silent Spy, um, and I think we didn't actually finish Haunted Mansion. It was just too much. We tried to play it. It took forever. We have finished it by the time I'm recording this, and I actually like it a bit. We then moved on to the Silent Spy, and I like that one. Pretty, It's pretty good. It had a really weird story. It was really goofy, and uh, uh, but we had a lot of fun with that. Um, and other than that, that was pretty much the day. Like, it was very little to throw back on, uh, but it was a really good day hanging out with the kids. And it's a day that I can remember three years in the future. I also remember that I kept my nose strip on because I couldn't get it off and just recorded with that so you guys could see it because that's how I was living my life back then. Now, because I'm living in Nicaragua, I did have nose strips when I first came here. I've lost so much weight living in Nicaragua, which Mary commented on the other day. And... Uh, it's, it's, I don't do anything to lose weight here, but because of the hot weather and because of all the food being fresh and prepared for everything, there's no prepared food, sounds weird. Because of the freshly prepared food everywhere um, and walking so much in the outdoor lifestyle, naturally I dropped about 60 pounds when I got here. So that was just, it just happened. Just, I mean, part of it was COVID weight, right? It was not just in the United States, but Texas, which is just a never go outside, never walk, never exercise kind of place. And with COVID, well, before COVID, I had been swimming, not every day, but I've been trying to swim regularly. And once COVID hit, that went away. And uh, so just the combination of stuck at home and living in the United States and all the unhealthy food that is normal there, and then coming here and having the, I walk everywhere and everything is fresh prepared. Just so many things changed so dramatically that a lot of weight was lost automatically. So I don't need the nose strips anymore. I, I'm right on the verge. It would be still good to kind of have them. I can't get a CPU. They don't sell CPAPs down here. And in the US, they're a controlled substance, just like they were cocaine or something, because being healthy and taking drugs are seen very similarly, I guess, in the United States. I don't know why that is. Certainly, it's easier to get cocaine than a uh, CPAP. No one's ever just offered me a CPAP on the street to try. Um, but uh, yeah, so here you can't get that. Nasal strips, I don't really want to deal with that. So trying to live a life where I don't need them, but it would be nice if, I, I mean, if I had a CPAP, I would use it. Uh, but there's no reasonable way to get one here and definitely no way. It'd be easier to have one custom built here than it would be to get one in the States. Uh, and trust me, I tried. At some point in my vlog, I'm sure there's a throwback where there was a long ordeal of trying to get one after mine died, and there was no way to do so uh, reasonably in the U.S. Like, absolutely everybody blocked it, and the doctors are like, we're trying to get you a CPAP, but your, insur your, your insurance company's trying to get you a CPAP, but we tried to get extorted by the uh, Texas authorized dealer and someone who's not a medical firm at all, not a financial firm. They had final say in whether or not it could get a CPAP, and their answer was no, because we weren't willing to pay their extortion fees to get it on top of everything else and to take big COVID risks with the family to get it. And so I've been living without one for years. Thank you to the U.S. medical system. One more example of why I don't have faith in those participating in U.S. medical, because things like that should not be allowed, that neither my health nor my doctor's recommendations for my health are considered at all, nor the insurance company willing and asking for a way to pay for it. Like all of the pieces that should be there to protect you all working and a third or fourth or fifth party allowed to completely put their foot down and say, nope, we're not a medical institution, but we're the ones who make the final call. It's terrible. So that was the day. Do all the stuff, like, subscribe, do the thing, and uh, I will see all of you tomorrow.